We have some questions now from some of our viewers, and most of these questions have to do with serving each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you the first one. Okay. And this is, this is from one of our viewers that says, Karen, how can I get my husband to understand how much it means when he is humble and serves me? And that's from Cynthia in Minnesota. So she's, she's asking you, how does she... How does she get her husband to be more humble? And I know many times when you told me you like me better when I'm humble, so go ahead. Well, that's what I would say. Yeah. <laughs> you just answered for me. <laughs> Thank you. No, but it is true. It's like you know, when I when you have been humble, I've come back and said, you know, it really means a lot. You yeah. know, I like it when you're humble and you're gentle and you're kind. And um, but who doesn't? I mean, you like it when I'm that way too. Yeah. You know, so it's not just you know when a husband's being humble. I think it's you know we should both consider each other, you know, and, and value each other better than we value ourselves. You know, we should uh, both look for ways of acts of love towards each other. I mean, it, basically, you know, in marriage, I like to think that we are representing what the Bible says, um, that we're supposed to act as Christians, not only as a, in a church, but as a family, as a member of a family. And I think it's just, it's so refreshing to see couples that, you know, are considerate of each other or they're, they uh, value what each other well, has to the, say. The, that's the only that's where great marriages come from. Yeah. Now, I mean, so let's just say that her husband's a, a jerk like I was, and that he he's lazy, that he takes her for granted, he doesn't do anything around the house. Should she still serve him? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, but but he's taking advantage of her. Okay, and he's not doing anything. So she's she's saying, how do I communicate with him? I mean, because you did this with me now. Yeah. So I'm saying, how does she communicate with him in, the, in him not doing for her what she wants? In other words, he's not humble and he's not a servant. Okay. She continues to serve him, and then what? Well, I think she just needs to reaffirm, you know, just continually. You know, it's like you're always saying, a man likes to be praised and honored. Right. You know, just, be, just praise him when he does do something. You know, thank yeah. you so much for taking the trash out. That meant so yeah. much to me. Yeah. Or... You know, thank you so much for all the hard work you do at, at, on your job. Yeah. You know, it means so much to me that you sacrifice for the family and you work so hard yeah. to earn a paycheck for the family. Just find other ways to praise him. And then, um, you know, and that, I think that'll help. Yeah. But let me just answer this from my perspective because that's the way I was. I was not humble and I was not a servant. And Karen did three things. One is she loved me better than I deserved and she did serve me. The second is she told me how she felt. And you know she wasn't mean about it, but she was she was direct, and she told me. And the third thing is she prayed, is because ultimately, Karen, it was God who changed my heart. Mm -hmm. And so for your husband, you know, I'm sure women feel frustrated because it's like he's not getting it. Well, I, I wasn't getting it either, but you were a good example, you were a good communicator, and you were a good prayer, mm -hmm. and that really is what turned me around. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I've got a question. <laughs> Sometimes when I try to help my wife around the house, she criticizes the way I'm helping, and it makes me want to stop altogether. <laughs> That's from Greg in Oklahoma. Well, so, so he's helping his wife, and his wife's basically telling him how to help. Okay. My theory on that, Karen, is, is that he needs to help her way. First of all, you know, around, around the house, I'll just say this related to you, is you're just smarter than me. You know, you do things around the house, you know, for years I'd see the way you do things around the house. I'd kind of like, well, why do you do that? And then you'd be gone and I'd be batching it. And I'd think, well, this is why she does that, you know, because I did it a different way and the, the, the wall fell down. You know, is that you know you're, you're domestically centered. You know things about the house. The other thing, too, is if I'm serving you, I'm serving you. And I want to do it your way. I want to do it in a way that pleases you. So... This, this man is saying, I'm helping my wife, but she criticizes me. I think what you ought to say is, honey, is this the way you want it done? And, and serve her. Well, the, let's just go back to the basics of just being a servant. You know, when you hire an employee and they are there to serve you, that employee doesn't have the right to come back and say, I don't like the way you're telling me how to do it. Yeah. And so, you know, it kind of goes back to the first question of being humble. You know, part of the, hu the husband in this situation is the humility that says, okay, help me to learn how to do it your way. Right. You know, instead of feeling like it's a critical thing, at the same time, the wife may be nagging. You know, she could be a little over, overly critical and too nitpicky, where it does kind of kill the yeah. spirit of wanting to do something. Well, and, and probably, you know, the, the wife could improve mm -hmm. in her communication skills because she's aggravated with him. But thank God you have a husband helping around the house. <laughs> you know, but, but 
I know with you, Karen, mm -hmm. is that when I'm serving you around the house, I'm serving you around the house. Mm -hmm. And I want to do it in a way that is a blessing to you and it takes pressure off of you. Right. So, so that's the main thing I would say. Okay, here's a question for you. We become so disappointed by marriage and don't care of each other like we should. How can we stop the cycle. So she's saying, this is Brenda from California, and she's saying we're so discouraged mm -hmm. just in marriage in general, we're on our heels. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not doing the right thing. So, Well, I think it goes back to what we've said and start doing the passionate things that you used to do before, whether it's dating or, you know, uh, the, the vision retreats are life changing. You know, if they're at an impasse, another great thing to do is to have a vision retreat that we talk about where you, you go in and you discuss the things that have been disappointing. Vision retreats when you get away. Mm -hmm go three or four days away and you wake up in the mornings and you pray and you talk about the issues in your marriage that are especially the problem areas of your marriage until you come to an agreement that you believe something the Lord has told you. And you just start discussing those things. You know, what, what's brought about this disappointment? You know, what is it that we could do to improve and come, you know, take the time just taking the time to even discuss that is going to be healing, yeah. you know, because a lot of times we get so busy and we keep waiting for the other person right. to do the right thing or the other person to start in, stop, start talking about it right. or to figure out. And, you know, both of you be the initiators. Both of you, you know, be the ones that say, hey, let's just go over this whole thing again and figure out what it is that we've got this impasse about. And, and like you're saying, pray and seek God and find the vision for that area of your, of your marriage. Absolutely. I mean, you know you're disappointed. You know that you need to do something. You be the person who starts it. You be the person who starts that conversation or suggest that you do go on a vision retreat. You just say, honey, let's get away and let's talk about these things until we come to an agreement. But let's don't live this way any longer. Thank you for joining us. Experience the life-changing series Lifelong Love Affair on CD or DVD. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Become a rock-solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock-solid partner today.